All right, what's up guys? James here. Thanks for coming back to the shop again one more time. I got my partner Dave over here on the sidelines. What, what are you, up? What are you doing over there, Dave? I'm doing electrical schematics. Electrical schematics. That sounds like fun. Today we're going to talk about tube notching. A lot of guys uh, have been watching my videos and you guys, some of you guys know I've been fabricating for, I don't know, like 30 years. I think I built my... Oh geez, my first roll cage when I was 16 and I'm... You might not know how old I am but I've been doing it for 30 years, so do the math. Um, so I'm gonna share with you a couple ways that you can notch the tubing or fish mouth or coke uh, your tubing so that you have a nice fit on your tubing so you can do the nice weld. Um, there's multiple ways to do it. We're gonna do it the easy, or maybe not the easy way, but the uh, most inexpensive way with some hand grinders. We'll step up to a coping or notching tool from JD Squared and then we'll use the mill, uh, which is probably my favorite way to do it. Um, so let's get started. Let's do this. All right guys, the first thing you need to do when you're gonna make a cope is figure out uh, how to mark the piece. So let's assume that this piece is a bar that we have on our Jeep or a roll cage or a bumper or something and we want to have this piece come into it. So the things you're going to need to know is is uh, you coming in straight, you coming in at an angle. So of course this is, whether it's at this angle or here you're still perpendicular to this piece. So the cope would actually be the same but this piece might come up and bend over and bend back down and so there's a, there's a lot of tricks and stuff in building roll cages and stuff but today we're just going to talk about coping. So then you have to decide or know if you're going to be coming in you know at a perpendicular T shape or if this is coming in at an angle. Of course if it's coming in at an angle that changes your cope. Um, you can have tools like this. This is a, uh, a pipe master from Longacre Racing. I think they probably still sell these. I don't know, I bought these a long time ago. Um, but this guy, you slide over the tube, you take your, you line this up, and then you just kind of gently tap this guy down. And, and that's gonna give you basically the shape of the coat. Okay. And sometimes you gotta play with these little fingers a little bit. And then the idea is that you pull this back and you would make your mark. Straighten that up a little bit. So now I can go ahead and this also has quadrants. So like this is our upper quadrant here. This is our side quadrant. This is our bottom. This one's missing a few pieces here, but it basically has your, your 12 o'clock, 3 o'clock, 6 and 9 o'clock position. And so we would know if we want to go square into this, we want that, you know, to be lined up with that line. So now I'm just going to trace along here, like that, with my, with my trusty Sharpie. I never have enough of these around the shop. And then that's what we want to cut. So we'll go over and we'll just cut this up with the, uh, with the hand grinder. All right, so be sure to uh, use your face masks and stuff. Four and a half inch angle grinder with a really thin blade on it. And I'm gonna cut in, I'm gonna make two cuts. So this is my top quadrant here, my 12 o'clock right there. So I've got this set up where it's straight up and down and I'm gonna come in right on this mark here and I'm gonna cut in at, it's basically a 45 degree angle. So there's your cope number one, or one side of the cope. Now I'll go ahead and cut the other side. How this works. Boom. So, now what's happening here is, even though I've got the angles right, you can see how it's really fat in there. It's too fat. So now we gotta go in and clean that up a little bit. Alright, so now I'm going to take a regular old four and a half inch grinder with flapper discs, not stone. I hate stones, they suck. Flapper discs 
or the bottom. I'm gonna hit both sides at the same time and I'm gonna kind of thin out this, this kind of bottom lip of the fish mouth here. Good. So we can see there, take the line, line it up, and boom. That's pretty much a perfect fish mouth. So of course you could spend a little more time on it, get it exactly perfect, but you can see where we're going there. And what I also did was, you might have saw where I put a little back bevel on the, the, the lips here, the mouth part. Not the inner part that goes into the... Because when you weld this, this part here is basically getting a nice... Uh, 90 degree internal fillet right here so you don't really need to bevel the tube here on that that much but up here on the mouth if it's just really thin you've got this thin area which isn't really ideal so it's ideal to uh, cut this back put a nice little bevel on there and so you have basically the same thickness of tubing uh, you're welding to this tubing not some thin real thin edge so that's it so that's how you do it by hand so sometimes You've got some super angle, maybe the pipe is coming in at a real steep angle and you got to do a really long, uh, odd shaped fish mouth. It's just easier to cut it by hand than using one of the other methods. Okay, so the next thing we're going to use here is the JD Squared uh, TN100 tube and pipe notcher, they call it. So it's basically uh, drill driven uh, down a shaft with a set of bearings and a hole saw on here. So get your bimetal hole saws. You clamp your pipe in here. Basically want to set it up where you're just have the tubing extended just far enough to do your fish mouth. You don't have to have this tube all the way over here or even halfway in the middle. You can kind of visualize where the, the fish, fish mouth is going to be if you draw a straight line. If I draw a line off the edge of this hole saw, okay, I'm going to kind of eyeball it here. Okay, so that's basically a straight line. Move the camera over the top a little more. See that, how it's a nice straight line? That, so we know that the end of the, the hole saw is going to poke, poke out this backside over here. So that's, that's as far in as that tube needs to go. And the fish mouth is going to end up coming up and looking something like this. Okay. Alright, so I got this set at a 20 degree angle. If we're going in perpendicular, or if you're going to start angling it, so that line I had drawn on there, so that would be the pipe coming in at a 20 degree angle, uh, you know, which happens a lot when you're building roll cages and stuff, uh, tube uh, bumpers, whatever, your tubes are coming in at multiple different angles. So this one here, you can set your angles. It goes off of this front face to the number. All right, make sure you hang on to this baby good. So you can see how quick that is, about 30 seconds. That's, as you can see, about as nice of a cope as you're gonna get. It still requires a little bit of grinding, so I'll go ahead and grind. All right, so you can see here, on the mouth part or the lip part, you can see I put this back angle on here, you know, like a 45 degree chamfer 
And so what that's for is when this, when you put this together, you can envision you're going to get a nice, you know, a, a 90 degree joint in through there with your weld. And then when you come up here, you can see how thick that is. It's an eighth inch thick, which is the thickness of the tubing. So you're going to have a lot of metal to weld there, and you're going to join this through here with your weld. You go back to a perpendicular kind of join along here, and then back over here, back to your nice thick area to weld, and you'll end up filling that all in with weld. You get a super nice joint. So that is beautiful. All right. Okay, here's one of my favorite options is using the mill. Um, it's a really simple setup, right? You clamp your tube in the in the vise, um, and you do your hole saw. Now, of course, you can angle, so if you needed to do anything other than perpendicular cope, you could angle the head, which takes a few minutes, um, but you know, you can swivel the head over, of course, in a bridge port. Um, you could angle the pipe in the vise, if you were only doing maybe 10 or 20 degrees, you know, you could probably get about that much angle without going through the trouble of um, moving the head of the bridge port. And one of the nice things about this, as you can see how I have it set up right now, I have it offset. So if for some strange reason you needed to do an offset cope, um, you just do, you can do it easily in the mill. So one thing I should say too is that I have all of these different hole saws. Um, this is what this would be your standard hole saw setup, and you know at Arbor you buy at Lowe's. Uh, this guy just snaps on here, and you can unthread it. Okay, and these little holes line up in there. These work pretty good. They do break, and they do snap. Um, so what I found over the years is I made my own arbors. Use I three quarter inch shafts. I turned on a little notch that fits into the notch inside the hole saw there, and then I TIG weld these on. You could MIG weld them, wouldn't really matter. Um, and I've literally probably had some of these for 20 years with the same hole saw. When you hold something nice and rigid, this one's got a one inch shaft, um, they just seem to last forever. Um, you know, that you don't get all the vibration, the teeth don't break off. Um, so these. If you're doing a lot of notching, um, this would be the way to go. You can, of course, hold these also in the lathe, like over there. You could put that in the chuck of the lathe and um, hold a piece of pipe somehow. Run in the mill nice and slow. I'm basically just letting the, the weight of the gravity push it down. I'm not putting much force on it at all. So this is the easiest way as far as I'm not having to run a drill. All right. So offset cope. So that would be un pretty unusual to do an offset cope, but you never know if you, you needed to do something like that. This is an inch and three quarter hole saw, inch and a half pipe, so really I should have used the inch and a half hole saw. One of the other ways that I do like to cope is on the lathe. Um, I have these big uh, roughing end mills, different sizes, that I can chuck up in the chuck. I don't have my, I lost my thing, it's been a long time since I've used this, but if you had an adapter or even the one off the JD squared, you can adapt to go into this guy here, and then you would just of course use the handles to drive it in, and and you would, you know, you'd be holding your piece of pipe, you know, on this guy, and you would just, and you could adjust the angle of course, and then you would just drive it in nice and gently and just, and it would just eat away at your pipe and give you the same fish mouth, okay? You know, of course, the bandsaw would be another way, so you could uh, hold it by hand, maybe with some pliers, and, and make your two cuts like we did with the, uh, the hand grinder. So this would be another option, would be the cold saw. Uh, my cold saw, I can actually swivel the blade all the way to 90, so I would swivel it to like a 45 degree, I'd make a cut, rotate the pipe 180, make another cut, and I would get the fish mouth that way as well. 
You could also do the same thing with a horizontal bandsaw, which is probably one of the next tools that a lot of guys have, or one of the porta bands. All right, guys, hopefully that gave you a little insight on how to uh, do some fish mouthing, some tube coping, uh, notching, whatever you want to call it, uh, using your basic hand grinders, using uh, something like the JD Square, using the mill, and also some other possibilities of using the lathe, the cold saw, or horizontal bandsaw. Uh, maybe I introduce you to some new tools and also some ways to deal with uh, breaking your hole saws all the time. Of course, these wouldn't work in the JD Square. Uh, so, and don't forget your safety equipment, guys. And uh, hopefully that helped you out. Give me a like and a share and a subscribe. Don't forget to hit the notification bell. And we'll see you next week. Peace.